Sippers, welcome to this episode of the Tea With Me podcast with me, Shane Todd. I am slightly sick. We'll talk about that later. Before we really get into the cut and thrust oh, dirty. of this episode, there'll be no thrust. We need to, there'll be cutting. <laughs> there will be thrusting. William will be here soon. <laughs> we need to plug a few things. Number one, Patreon. www.patreon.com. It's all happening over there. Join the 2,000 plus people already on our Patreon. Why are they there? Because we're bringing out bonus content left, right and centre. There's too much. There's a bonus episode on a Monday. Live stream on a Friday. Pre-sale tickets go on there. There's vlogs. There's stand-up films. There's the tattoo thing. Might already be up now or it's coming up. Don't worry about this. Just get on. Just get there and then get your burns from there. But just sign up, patreon.com slash tea with me podcast. You'll trust me, you'll have a good time. Plus there's about nine thousand hours worth of content already already there. We are sponsored by none other than Craft Tea Brew. Now, if ever, if ever there was a perfect fit to sponsor this podcast, it's the guys at CTB. I don't know if they call themselves that Craft Tea Brew. It is Northern Ireland's first Oh my god, is that what you call them? That's a great name. What? Crafty Brew? Crafty, oh, like crafty, crafty brew. brew. That's amazing. I, I guarantee you, even they haven't thought of that. Uh, and, yeah, not, and, now they're, and now they're going to start going. No, no, no. We, yeah, we've always yeah, said that's that. What, that's what it always was. What a cracker name! It's Northern Ireland's first kombucha brewery. Now you didn't think thirty years ago we'd have a, a, a commercial kombucha brewery, but we do now, and that can I just say is a beautiful sign about how far this place has come that we have a commercial kombucha brewery. I always said back in the worst days. I said, one day we'll have a commercial kombucha brewery, and now we have it. Kombu- what is, do you know what do you think kombucha is, do you know? It's what's, it's what's, stop the troubles. <laughs> it's a fermented tea drink, which originates from ancient China, and can I be honest, that's my favourite China, if I'm honest, followed by the female wrestler. Um, you know back in ancient China, they were do- doing a lot of wild stuff. Like, these guys, I can't even, I don't even want to go into it. <laughs> But they were up to a lot of things, and one thing they were doing... Is that Geng- Genghis Khan? Is that what Okay, well, each of their own. These guys <laughs> use traditional brew methods um, to make this stuff. It's really good for your gut health. It's packed with probiotics. Good for digestion. The main thing is it tastes great as well. There are about 900 of these in our fridge, and everyone's going through them here at Tea With Me HQ. Look, if you're looking to swap out alcohol, maybe in the run-up to Christmas, you want to knock a booze in the head. It's a healthy alternative to sugary drinks as well. Maybe you're drinking too much Coca-Cola. You know what you're like on the Coca-Cola? They've got flavours like Lightning McGreen, which is their top seller. It's made from single estate Kenyan green tea. Not multiple estates out in Kenya. Single. You get 10% off uh, using the code tea with me, all one word, tea with me, at Craft Tea Brew. Dot co. So what you want to do is find that link in the description of this. Click on that. Look at these. We'll do some. We'll sample on Patreon some tasting of these. We'll do a little tasting session. We're also sponsored by Manscaped. Now, coming up to Christmas, you're thinking about what is Santa having a sack? Well, speaking of sacks, these guys at Manscaped are ball crazy. They love it. Coming up to Christmas, people think, oh, I've got all the presents in, all that kind of stuff. All the employees at Manscaped are just thinking about balls and things around it. They have the perfect that performance. That would be your dick. D- depending on who you're talking to. What other things would be around your balls? Uh, Dion, have you ever heard of ladies? We well, don't have balls. Exactly. <laughs> so you've just proven my point. I don't think I have. I think you have. Ancient Chinese proverb. Okay. Respect everyone individually. How much a proverb? They have a Platinum Package 4.0, the the ultimate stocking filler. This is one where, like, you know, like, people do... A lot of people do silly secret Santa gifts, and someone opens it, and they're like, ah, oh, but I got you some class, so it's really annoying. Anything from Manscaped will be a great gift. What you want to do is go on there. They've got... They've got every... Look at this. This is a new product here. 
two in one shampoo and conditioner. And that's going to clean and revitalize your hair. And that is a nice bottle. Is that for your hair on your head or your hair on your balls? Well, knowing these crazy folks at Manscaped, you can put it everywhere. Okay. They, they won't make a product if you also can't use it on your balls. That's not true. Don't put the aftershave there. <laughs> I said aftershave with an R in it. Um, aftershave. The, this vegan, by the way. Why well, wasn't planning on eating it? <laughs> <laughs> Check out Manscaped for Christmas. You know by now they've got amazing products on there. Genuinely good gifts. Manscaped.com. Use code tea with me for 20% off and free shipping. <gasps> My guests are Dionna Doherty. Because Willie T is not here. Has anybody heard from William? Is he safe? Is he okay? We've not heard from him. Will I phone him and put him on loudspeaker? What a crap prank if he just wasn't going to turn up. <laughs> yeah. And then like next week he was all, ha, I got you. Yeah. What it's a just, slow burner. It's just really inconvenient. Are you going to phone him? Yeah. Watch it. Give me something to say. Say why you're not in my thing. Oh, okay. <gasps> do you do say I haven't turned up either and you're really annoyed? <laughs> <laughs> so, William said to me recently on tour. Hey, hey, mate, are you okay? Yeah, what's up? Are you coming to the podcast? Yeah, it's 11.25, isn't it? Absolutely not. Absolutely not. Where is it? I'm just checking my messages to you here to see who's who's wrong. Um, it's ten fifteen. Fucking what? Hang on, let me see. How did I have eleven forty-five in my head? Ah, no, I definitely said ten fifteen. No, yeah. I also where, said where it. Yes. No, what's up, mate? What's up? Yeah. Fuck. That's no, completely my fault. You're hundred percent. All right, oh, all right. So, I am sorry, dickhead. Yeah, <laughs> no need to call me that for missing my <laughs> podcast. So rich. Here, are you are you able to come over? I'm literally just like out of the shower now. I was ready to make good time for eleven forty-five. That's all right. Put some clothes on and come over. We've only started. How long does it take him to get an hour? <laughs> right, okay, I'll be over soon. All right, bye. Right, apologies for that. No, no, just just put some clothes on and come over. Don't get dried. <laughs> All right, mate. Bye, bye. That would be the most stinking thing to put your clothes on when you're still wet. Like, that would be disgusting. That's not dis- I don't think in the grand scheme of things it's disgusting. Do you know what I'll do quite a lot of time? I'll forget to dry my back. Why? Probably one in six. I, because, no, why are you... If I say I forget to do it, why are you saying why? Why do you forget to do it? Do you know what Can't it is? Forget? You're coming out of the shower and you're wrapping your towel around your midriff, aren't you? No, you're wrapping it around your whole body from your tits. Like a wee turban. <laughs> See, for some reason, right, this is mental. I can't do the, like, towel. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah look, I'm, I'm loose. Do you know why? I just think it's mental. I, I, I know this doesn't make sense. <laughs> no, it does. I think it's really, it's a really weird look. Yeah, it sits like a big ball as well. Like, it sits. Yeah, it's just like. Yeah, I know I, what you mean. I don't know. I associate it with, like, hot guys in 90s films. I don't know. Yes, and you just don't want to intrude on that. But why would I ever need the wrap? I just get dried in the room I'm in. So when you get out of the shower, you yeah. know, you'll get dried and dressed immediately? Yeah. You not do like, you just like, so you already have your clothes prepared when you get your, like I'll hop in the shower and get out and yes, like I'm not a, know what I'm going to wear. Or I'm an adult. You see, so I <laughs> would lay my outfit out. Yeah, yeah. Um, This is really inappropriate, but has your, your children ever seen you naked? <laughs> you know I mean I think it would only be inappropriate if other people's children <laughs> see me. no like my brother has, has always said about like do you know like if he's been going to the toilet and like his kids walk in and they're like really like toddlers and they're all like coming up to his legs like daddy you're like <laughs> yeah. pointing at his bits so, oh what is that yeah do you know like they've seen me naked yeah 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 and are they like <laughs> are they accept yeah they're accept they're very tolerant are they just like what's that <laughs> my son was like daddy it's okay <laughs> it's okay <laughs> he's like someday um, no, I don't think he's ever... Yeah, yeah, he's, uh, yeah. He doesn't understand the way I pee compared to the way he pees. Yeah, does he pee, does he pee in a potty? Or does he pee in his nappy? No, I use a potty. You pee. <laughs> <laughs> My mate was telling me... He's like, Daddy, why do you not wipe your hole? <laughs> <laughs> My mate told me to, that he was potty in the sun and to do it. He he went in the potty. <laughs> and he's like, but my son took so long to potty train. That a lot of the time I was going to the toilet, it was into the potty. I think that's weird. I'd he, prefer he just, he just got used to nappies it. to ten. Yeah. Well, do you know Catherine Mayne, the comedian Catherine Mayne? She potty trained her kids at ten months. 
No. All her kids. She says, yeah. She goes, and I researched because I was like, that's crazy. But apparently, it's easier to get kids out of, like, nappies younger. Yeah, but at 10 months, they can't talk. How are they going to... But What's the signal? You do sign language. You, you sign language. She taught. She oh oh, oh yeah. She, at ten months, she taught them to body and, and sign language. And sign language. Apparently, that's what it says in her book. And she was saying that if it's apparently easier to like get them because as soon as they start knowing that they're shitting themselves, then they'll be like, "Oh, I shit my nappy." But if they if you get them before they even know they're doing shits, and then train them to go under the toilet, it's apparently a smoother transition. I'm calling bullshit on that. Are you? Yeah. I mean, I'm calling. I'm calling her out. There's no way that happened. Her 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 11 month old b boys wearing boxers. So, <laughs> <laughs> uh, fuck William Thompson. I um, yeah. I see for a second. I really thought I had it wrong. I love whenever you're like, oh, I actually got I got it right, and you got it wrong. Can I tell you something that was just you know in that vein of like when you check something and you the relief of like this. Yeah. Listen to this. So William came with me on tour. So we did Liverpool, Newcastle, Glasgow, Edinburgh. Yeah. And let me say, not what I'm, why I brought up, the best run of shows I've ever done in my life. Oh, good. Then uh, I did one then. I'm glad I, for you because it's been like, going really, really bad, hasn't it? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we needed this. Yeah, you needed that wee picky up. The best shows. Yeah. See Newcastle? What is it? You ever been to Newcastle? Yeah. England? No. Cracking place. Is it? Friendly, easy to get around, kind of reminds me of home a wee bit. Easy really to get there. around? Yeah. What what obstacles are they putting in your way? You in know other what places? Easy to get around Edinburgh. Oh no, up Hills. and down. That's what Dairy's like. Yeah, yeah. Cobbly, sure. hilly, up and down. So hold on. So yeah. See, <laughs> see the way you are, are up and Dairy. That sounds like something you would call a cup of tea. Yeah. Cobbly, hilly, upside yeah, down. Cobbly, hilly, upside down. Yeah. <laughs> um. So what were you saying? So you're what happened in your tour that you're well, saying that you? Right. Let me tell you this. Yeah. So. Yeah, I just mean this is something where you just get that immediate feeling of like, oh yes, that's brilliant. So. I, I thought this these these tours would be a brilliant chance for me, uh, you'll know as a fellow mother, right? To get to get some sleep. Yeah, oh yeah. So I'm going away, I'm tight, my body's aching a bit of interrupted sleep. I go, hotels, as soon as the gig's over, see ya, no drinks after. No, no, no. No anything. Bedtime. Away to bed. Yeah. Plus, I'll get up late. I'll get up at 10 or something like that. Crazy talk. It never worked out. No. But whenever I was going to Glasgow... I was like, this would be a good chance to do it. Text my friend, Christopher MacArthur Boyd. Do you know Christopher? Yeah, love been, him. Been on the podcast for one of the nice guys in comedy. Fun guy. We arrange a dinner, right? So like a 5.30 dinner. I, it's my only day off. Yeah. So like go for dinner at half five. And it's a good idea. See, by about four. So I just got into the hotel. My train was delayed. It was raining. I was tired. I was thinking about a nap. I don't nap. And the football was on. And I just got into my hotel turn the TV on, I was like, it'll be good to see him, but I was going to have to walk 20 minutes to a train station, get a train to Pardick, and go meet him there, plus, you can't just have a quick dinner, you know, you got to yeah, yeah, catch yeah. up and all that if kind of thing. If it's something you haven't seen in a while, yeah. He texts me, Did and I read the top bit, mate, I'm so sorry, see Love when I saw it. that, I didn't even open it. Love it. I was just, I threw it down, I just collapsed on the bed, I was like, this is brilliant yeah because he did the thing that i wanted to yeah. do but couldn't have well that happens to me all the time you i make plans in advance i'm do you know whilst you're having a good day yes and you make sociable plans for other times yeah forgetting how much you're normally a miserable bastard so, so you, you're doing that thing it's always going to be like this yeah yeah, yeah. i'm, I'm right. having a great fun day today yeah. i'm happy to talk to other human beings so i i assume that like in three weeks time i'll be happy to like go out and have drinks with a friend or go out and have dinner with somebody forgetting that that's shit you hate doing yeah yeah <laughs> and then yeah. it gets to that closer to that and then there's three weeks of dread you're right. like, I don't want to go. Yeah. I don't remember even liking this person that much. Yeah. And that's a constant. And Sean always goes, me, just cancel, because I bet you they don't like you too. <laughs> well, they're, 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 they're if you the cancel, thing. they're going to go, ah, uh, no worries, but they're they're loving it. You'd love to give someone that relief that you had, where they're like, oh, thank fuck. The last minute But cancel. if I found out, if I cancelled on someone because I didn't want to go out with them and I found out they were relieved, I'd be like, what the fuck? Yeah. Oh, you, you also can't let them know. I text him back. Because he was busy saying he's been gigging a lot recently and he was going to have a night in with his girlfriend. He's like, I haven't seen her in a while, so I think it's probably best to stay in. And I just texted him back. I said, you're a horrible man. Yeah, yeah. And then Make him feel bad. Because no, um, you want them to feel bad because yeah. then it feels like they owe you one. And also, here's a great feeling too. William was only supposed to do Liverpool and Newcastle. Mm -hmm. Then he had such a good time at those. He was supposed to fly home, do Kieran's Ulster Hall show. And then he goes, see, after that, I'm going to fly myself over to do Edinburgh. Because oh, I'm right. loving these shows so much. They were magic, like. So he goes, Aye. I'm going to fly over. 
So I said, well, if you're cover, if you're flying over, I'll book your hotel. Mm-hmm. Got a last minute deal. We three star for him. Fifty four quid. Where were you staying in the same hotel? No. <laughs> <laughs> oh, come on. I was in very nice hotels. William was always in a reasonably oh, pricey hostel. Mm, <laughs> yeah. yeah. No, no, he stayed because here's the thing as well. So I don't know if you heard this or you missed out on it, but when Kieran took William on tour, you know William's sort of a boy who gets taken on tour by yeah, older men, yeah. right? Because he's yeah, because he's got uh, less responsibilities. He, he's like, fuck it, I can get up and go, and he's obviously yeah. a great, great act. Exactly. Yeah. I like that you added on that side. I'm also, like, I didn't want it to sound like he's just available. <laughs> I meant like he's also good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. Phenomenal, right? So he, but he, he goes on tour with, with a lot of people. And, and he's great, he's great company on tour too. But when he went away with Kieran, so Kieran did his first tour, UK dates and that kind of thing. Yeah. Kieran brought William, but also Kieran brought Chloe, Kieran's yes, wife. Yes, of course, yeah. Shared a room. With William and Chloe? Yep. Family room the whole time. No, <laughs> Kieran didn't think this Who was weird. Who was the child, William? What, yeah, <laughs> William was on the wee pullout under them. <laughs> He's in the cot. <laughs> He's got a fucking hay chair. <laughs> Unlike Catherine Ryan's kids. Yeah. He's still body He's drink. still a nappy. <laughs> <laughs> Kieran having to get William up in the night to burn. <laughs> <laughs> James is shitty arse. <laughs> Mate, why have you shut yourself? <laughs> so dirty. <laughs> why did did William never like complain with management? <laughs> Do you know what I mean? Why does Kieran keep trying to wipe my arse? <laughs> Kieran keeps rolling after me, my baby wipes. <laughs> It's so dirty. Uh, <laughs> um, but Kieran was so like, "How many nights were there?" Dan, what do you what do we say? Like they were away for what five, six nights? Yeah, I'm not sure. It was like always family room. Oh no, I think there was one night. He's like, "I'll give him his own room," or he got his own room. He had all his dinner. But how I, I said that's just Kieran's like, "What's weird about that?" I was like, "It's the most unnerving thing I've ever heard that you're just in bed with your wife and your mates just like." The, you a work colleague too as well as me yeah. and Kieran's like well nothing happened I was like oh no I don't think anything it's weirder than not it'd be less weird if there was if it was if it was a full sex party yes but three people just asleep night night that happened to me and Sean though we were we were gigging in Bunkrana in like some festival Funkrana Funkrana and what do you, you know your guy who does Farmer what do you call him Michael Farmer Michael. Yes. So they had booked us and they did like do support for their show. We were up there and the other guy who does support, David, what do you call him? We, Sean and I were booked. We, we, they booked David us Elliott. their room. Not David Elliott, no. And we were in with the other nah. act and it was me, Sean and him and there was like a big bed and a wee bed. No. Nah. Me and Sean had to stay in the wee bed. <laughs> no, you stayed. <laughs> no. But uh, no, I wouldn't. I couldn't. I couldn't. But no. it was just like, the, no, but there was no, the place was booked out because it was a festival in Bonkrana. There was no other room. Did you just drive down? Yeah, but Sleep we also got blocked. Doesn't matter. There's no. But he mis- should have stepped in the car. It was two of us. So Kieran, yeah, weird. Kieran was like, "What's weird about this?" I was like, "It's ten out of ten weird. You're in a <laughs> family room with your mate and your wife, right? Ten yeah, out of yeah. ten weird. Plus, you bring him on tour, right? So, when me and William went away. I texted him the night before. No, he he gets his own room, right? So I have a room. He has a room. And we're in the same hotel, right? Apart from the, in Edinburgh, okay. where I really pushed the boat out, and he stayed and walking around. We described as horrific hotel. Oh shit! But then it was last minute. He said he was going okay. down. Plus, I did it wrong because I was only in Edinburgh for a day mm-hmm. and I should have booked a really nice hotel for Glasgow because it was yeah. there for two days mm-hmm. so I didn't get the use of my Edinburgh hotel. Anyway, William has his own room. I texted him the night before we left for the airport. I was like, mate, I know this might sound weird but I'm getting the massage as soon as we arrive in Liverpool in my hotel room from Tyson Fury's masseuse. You need to be there. You need to be in the room. So you don't get... No, it's it's just it's just... There's just that's how rumors start. Oh, why? You know, when you, I get when you, I when you it, don't when trust yourself, <laughs> <laughs> you needed someone there to hold you back. <laughs> I'm like William, tie my hands down to the bed. Yeah. Um, so I don't no, want to start accidentally wanking people. It's just something like, <laughs> you know. You know, you know, you know. I I just thought it's weird to check in and then three minutes later, a man with a massage bed walks through reception and says he's going to Shane Todd's room. So I'm like. Do you know what? It's not weird, right? And I'm a weird guy. Just 
just be there so it's like we're just chatting to the guy because I don't know the guy either really so how did this massage come about so have you did you go like on google to book a massage in Liverpool and you happen to book this person and is it somebody who comes out to hotel rooms or is this a resident masseuse within the hotel no so I, I know a guy that lives in Liverpool mm. Ryan McLaughlin he's been in the pod he's played football for Liverpool man about town I said who's like a sports massage guy because um, my back and my neck are killing me my mm. shoulders so I is there someone I can go to <clears throat> so that was the plan I would go to them yeah. somewhere in Liverpool like, city centre yeah more normal he messaged me back to, here's this guy he's Tyson Fury's personal so goes on camps with the, you know if Tyson Fury's uh-huh. in the States or whatever this he, guy goes to and so then you asked him to come to your hotel room yes no I said where are you and he goes I, I come to you and then you were like what are you wearing <laughs> <laughs> and he goes I'll come to you. And I said, right. So, here's where it gets weird. I, as soon as me and William checked in, I said to the receptionist, I said, excuse me, we've got a room keys. And I said, <laughs> I said, what I meant to basically say was, we're stand-up comedians, so we're, we're, I'm, I'm, we're performers, right? So, at the time, I, I should have said nothing. Yeah. I said, excuse me, we're comedians. Mm-hmm. And I was basically getting across to her, I'm doing a live performance tonight. And I need to like loosen, loosen my, my body yeah. to do a good performance. So there's a guy coming to give me a massage Even in my room. Even that's all surplus information. But here's the thing. I, I backed out of giving her too much information. I went up to the reception and said, excuse me, we're comedians. There's a guy coming, <laughs> <laughs> there's a guy coming on the massage bed up to our room. <laughs> Is that okay? <laughs> and she went, yeah, yeah. why? She went, why, uh, why, why are you telling me? And I went, well, no, it's just in case that's not allowed. Yeah. <laughs> and she went... What are you gonna be? And I was like, no, no, I'm just, I'm let, I'm letting you know. Yeah. Plus, also, she's if there's like, like, I don't work here. Yeah, if there's like, <laughs> I'm like, if there's a communal space or like, part of the gym, it'd be better to use there. I don't want her to think there's a weird sex thing going on. But this but, is the thing: is this is somebody? Why do you care if she what she thinks? Who's to say she hasn't seen the podcast before? Well, right. Do you, now, if you were in a hotel room and you went in and you didn't like your room, would you ask to be, to move? Yeah, but it would need to be something quite drastic. Like Tyson Fury's and Pussus <laughs> in your room. <laughs> but, when, but when me and William walked away and the reception was like, fuck, I, wh- William, I went to William as we were walking up to our rooms. I went, why is she looking at me like that? He's like, because it didn't make sense. You just went up to her and went, we're comedians, so there's a guy called me <laughs> massage. Imagine if the, like, the next week, like <laughs> Peter and Kay's checking in and she's like, and what time will your masseuse be arriving? <laughs> she just assumes that's protocol. I'm the only guy, like people will be like, oh, you have a masseuse on tour? I'm the only guy in a Novotel hotel with a <laughs> personal masseuse. <laughs> like, it's a three-star hotel. Yeah. But anyway, William was, was in the room. So anyway, guy's absolutely brilliant. Mm-hmm. working it all out telling us about being on tour and, and all the big boxing matches he's been at and as William was so, so William got a massage too because mm-hmm. I was like we've got to go we're going to do another podcast I said w- William we're like because here's the thing that difference is between so me and weird Kieran. where you were like fuck it John Bond do him too <laughs> <laughs> so it's weird. different between me and Kieran. I look after yeah. people on tour he got a massage so I said hey if I can get one Give him you do realise the next time Kieran takes William on tour, he's just gonna be there like <laughs> It would take him so long with the size of his hands. Yeah, yeah. Well, Them hands would be great, he could need <laughs> in your back. I was staying in a hotel once, I think it might have been in Wicklow or Galway, I was filming and the people in the room next to me did non stop riding. Oh, yeah? I mean non stop riding right. for on you end. didn't know they weren't part of the production they weren't part of the production I was like this is definitely like they're away like they're both married to someone else like right, no, right, right. no normal couple rides this much yeah. they were, it was like 20 minutes <laughs> 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 no, it, it genuinely went on like all fucking night but it was so funny cause, and I couldn't sleep it was so noisy and they stopped at one point and I went oh thank fuck and then I just heard the kettle go on <laughs> And then about 15 minutes later, when the brews were done, they fucking started again. Oh. It was so stinking. Just the admin of that. Uh, yeah. It's all, it's all passionate and sexy. Yeah. <laughs> Oat milk. <laughs> <laughs> I'm ready to go. I'm like, there's no almond. Where yeah. is the nearest bar? Do you need um, a wee caffeine break? But I t- so I, when William was... F- weird times you just tuned into this. William was face down on the bed yeah. with his head in the hole. <clears> and I took a photo of that. Like subtly on my phone, and I sent it to like some comedians we're friends with. Yeah. And Kieran Bartlett wrote back straight away and said, "Yeah, and my family room's weird." <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 
did you so whenever you were in the room and you're getting a massage what do you, yeah. do you have like your underwear on <laughs> on my head yeah <laughs> <laughs> do you, yeah. you put like your sheet around I your shorts on. yeah you've got you've got your shorts on yeah, yeah it's yeah. less weird yeah no do you know what? up until now i thought everyone was naked now do you know what's more weird yeah I've got a gig tonight, so I'm not well. I mean, you know, I've got a cold. Everybody here has a cold. Chuckle Brothers here have a cold. Um, if I leave they pass today everything with a cold, you are so fucked. Huh? If I leave today with a cold, you won't. You won't. You won't. No, that's so. How? What are you a doctor now? <laughs> Fucking yeah. biologist. You won't catch it. You'll be fine. Now, what's weirder is I've got a gig tonight. Yeah. Right, and normally I would cancel, but my dad's mates running it. Then I'm gonna do it. You would cancel a gig for a runny nose. Yeah, because I wouldn't want to watch that and say, hold on, I get my hanky. I wouldn't know. But. Shouldn't be bringing your teddy bears on stage. <laughs> but my neck and my shoulders are still really. I've got an injury. So there's a guy after this podcast coming to give me a massage downstairs. Get out of fucking town. Sure. Where are huh? In an office? Just my neck. No. <laughs> that's. That's. I know. You're making I a know. real habit out of this. I know. What other things can you get people out to do? Because whenever we were in the wedding form, you got somebody out to do your hair. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, I know that's just a hair. Am I weird? Am I a weird guy? Well, what other things would you ask people to come out and do? Would you have you ever had your nails and all done? No, but I, I, I would. I would like to, to look after them. Like yeah. you wouldn't get a collar on them, My would nails you? Are okay. No. Or you like a nude. A I get a nude. Right, so we wouldn't. I wouldn't want people to know it. Yeah, yeah, you're like, like this is just the color of my cuticles. <laughs> yeah. Or you could get somebody out. Have you ever had clonic irrigation? No. I've wanted to do that for years. Really? Would you not want that? Oh, well, you probably don't need it. <laughs> Sorry? Sorry, that's a lot. Would you not be because I've cleared Crohn's out disease. as it is? <laughs> do you know what Crohn's disease is? Is it about shitting? That's an element of it. Yeah, I think that's a side effect, isn't it? Yeah, yeah so I don't feel like you're... I, do you know what it is? I don't feel like you're a bunged up guy. No. <laughs> I mean... That's a compliment. Yeah. Things um, are running smoothly. Things are running nice. Do I need a clonic irrigation? No, I don't. I don't, I don't think I would like the process of because I don't think you just go and do it and then leave. I think there's probably like preparation to it. Because here, see... Like before, what? You Manscaping a, your bits? Have you ever had a colonoscopy? No. I don't know why to think about that. Has anyone here? Dan's had it, that's right. Camera up your hip. Mike, you had it? No. I imagine it's very sharp. See, you're really drowsy for it. You're on like Fun. local anaesthetic yeah. or like, you know, vaguely local. Yeah. In the locale. Yeah. Re- nearby. In the vicinity. Yeah. So you're like in and out of it. So it, oh, I remember it being uncomfortable, not that sort of uncomfortable, but it's the preparation <laughs> you got to do. You got to drink a drink that tastes like metal and it clears you out and you stay in the bathroom and you drink and you fast and you drink and drink and drink. Oh no. And it is one of the worst things I've ever done. They obviously want you to have a really... I mean, yeah. kick colon when they go and have a look at it. Yeah, yeah. Nice and cleaned out. Yeah. Uh, they, they need to be able to, to, to see. To see things. So you t- drink this drink and you do clear yourself. It's a yeah. worse thing. What's that saying? Is, is it, you can't see the wood through the trees. You can't see the colon through, <laughs> through the, the shit. Through the shit. Yeah. That's yeah. what they say. But I always thought a colonic irrigation, I, in my head, I was like, you'd leave feeling like air afterwards. Right. You'd be hopping around on your toes. You'd feel great because apparently they take out. Like you've apparently got. If you're a meat eater, you apparently have like sausages from when you were twelve in your intestines. Maybe not that long back for me, but like apparently there's like years worth of decay and meat all up in your hip. And that's maybe the worst thing I've ever heard. It's true. Years Catherine of Ryan meat said about it in her book. And hip. Yeah, years of decay and bits of decay and meat. Like you apparently have like. I mean, like half a stone of like decaying like meat all up in your arse and your intestines and all, and your cl- a clonic irrigation would get rid of that. And I think that sounds fab. Dan, look, that's your Christmas present right there. Dan, look into it and see: do, is there a bit? Is there someone who does it in Belfast? I mean, there, there oh, will be someone who does it. I oh, you don't like the idea of getting it done in Belfast? Look. The thing is. All right, love, we're going to I, <laughs> and you just stick this pipe up here. But do you ever be somewhere really inappropriate and somebody recognises you? From something, and you're like, no, 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 this isn't the place. Hospital. Yeah, but like, say you're getting like a skin tag cut off your arse cheek or something. Right. <laughs> no. Very arse based today. <laughs> Whenever I was A&E with with my three month old, literally, I, I I walked in, like child on my shoulder, clearly like we're in a work it out right. We're in A and E. Yeah. I've got the kid here, and some guy went, all right, mate, what? And I I, I looked at yeah. him to suggest, no, 
Yeah. No. Whatever it is. No. Yeah. He was like, no, your handbrake's not on your car. <laughs> but even... Yeah, 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 yeah. I'm like, no, you cannot get a photo. He's like, no, no mate, your car's killed three people there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Who, who, can you just get out and fucking sort... <laughs> I, I was one time in with like having a meet with my bank manager and he was all like, my wife's a big fan. I was like, yeah, but I know, like, you're just... We're talking about my money at the minute and I'd just rather we didn't... It's funny that your first response to that is, I know. <laughs> I know, yeah, I, I know get she that, does, I get like, that, but show me the money. Yeah, yeah, I just think it's inappropriate. But Jamie Lee O'Donnell, one time I remember her tweeting one time, somebody tweeted her and being all like, um, she was a cheeky bitch that I saw her, not like having a hospital and she wouldn't even like get a photograph of the thing. And she was like, <laughs> I was read the room. Heart, I was getting open heart surgery. Yeah, yeah, I was just after <laughs> clinic irrigation. I, I was telling him I love the podcast and all and he was, I, I was in a coma, mate. I was literally. Somebody came over to me at a gig in Derry a few weeks ago and went to me, I love that chain Todd thing. And I was all, Cool. <laughs> okay. And they were like, do you know what, like the podcast now? And I was all, yeah, 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 yeah. Oh, I'm aware. Hey. And they were like, I know. see you later. And I was like, what, what connection have people made there? Dan, do we figure out anything out about Belfast colonoscopies? No, colonic irrigation. Oh, colonic irrigation. I think there might be one in Lisburn, maybe. Uh, if ever there was a place to clear your arse out. Yes, the Northern Ireland Clonic Irrigation Capital. Capital, yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't, c- can you find out, like, I'd like to know how much it costs and how long it takes. I would, and I, what prep do you have I to would do? say there's about, it takes about an hour. Now, you do know that they they fill they fill your arse full of water, like a litre or two water goes into you first. Right. It goes, because obviously it can go in and then go through all your intestines and your Is it, is it like if you have a, again. you know, like a wee toy in the bath? That you, yes. you a duck and sucks you, and in you, all the water. You, you you push all the air out of it, and then the water goes in, and then the water goes out. Yeah, right. I think that's it. But when it comes out, it's full of shit and old meat. But your Christmas turkey from have they three actually years got ago. a tube in you? Aye, it's a fucking tube, and you and they can. This the dirty thing about it is you can see oh, oh, the tube. All? Have you never seen videos of it? Why have I locked this up so nope. much? <laughs> so they'll put a big clear tube, right? Maybe a couple of meters long, whatever, up your arse. And they'll whoosh all this solution in. And it'll all come back out again. But when it comes back out, it's all got bits of shit in it. It's all pur- purple. <laughs> Shit's purple. Brown and green and whatever. And they're all, everyone's watching it. What do you mean everyone? There's a spectator gallery? <laughs> <laughs> Ten or a ticket. Sports Patreon. Fans. Everyone who's on. Yeah. yeah. Put out for your Patreon. I am. Um, I don't know. Is, are people. Do you think there's people who are like, it doesn't do anything for you? No. Science. Huh? You can't just say <laughs> science. But I don't know. Like, I think that not everyone's have. Why is not everyone not having it done? Because well, it's probably exp- and it's expensive and it's embarrassing. I'd say What's ballpark wrong? figure. I'd say for clinic irrigation, it's about 300 pounds. I would say about three, 400 pounds. I haven't got a price yet, but there are people saying that it's not always great for you. You don't. You want to yeah. keep some of that shit on? Get rid of all the good bacteria that's in your gut. Yeah. Well. Yeah. Right. That's it. I'll not get one then. Right. That's I like it. I like the good bacteria. Yeah, I think people. Yeah, I think. Do you know what people do it for too? Do you know like um athletes who need to drop weight quickly will get like a clonic irrigation and sweat it out and all that sort of uh, shit? I don't know if they do, but that that sounds like something they should do. When William gets here for being late, he's getting a clonic irrigation in the office. Yeah, Dan, get whilst, some bottles tied together. Have a massage beside him. <laughs> <laughs> Whenever your man comes, be like, do you? Clean out hips. He was so easily talked, will he, into getting the massage in the hotel room that I, I think if we were just like, we're doing a clonic irrigation right now, he'd be okay yeah. with it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. If, if there was going to be some views behind it. Yeah. Um, but the tour was tour was so good. What what about shows you've done recently? What's What's been a great gig? What's been a bad gig? R- Queen's Comedy Club. Didn't enjoy that. Right. Recently. Right. I was a, that was now, a why movie. do you think that was? I think I was shit. Right. No, Mickey, I'll tell you, Mickey didn't have a great one either. It was a really, it, you know what it, I think it was just not a great night. Do you know just one of them nights doesn't go well? But then um, we did a gig in that distillery last week. Yeah, Dave, Copeland, Copeland. Fucking cracker gig. Yeah. Like it was brilliant. Dave said somebody lit up a cigarette. I think Dave made that up. No. Oh, no, no, no. Some guy got kicked out for smoking in the front row. I did, I. You, it's weird. <laughs> you know when people say the longer you've been married, you turn into the person? You and Sean have this same mind thing. Where we that was like things. when so well when some Sean was on the podcast, some guy wrote in and went, "What about the time Sean broke his arm in Derry Trasna or somewhere?" Right. And Sean was like, "Never no. up there." And I was like, <laughs> "Sean, has that guy made that up?" And he's like, "Yeah, hundred percent." He's like, "How have you ever broken your arm?" No. No. In Derry Trasna. No. Three seconds later, Sean went, "Fuck." Maybe he's talking about when I broke my arm in Derry Trasna. <laughs> Do you know where he's got that from? Has da. 
because even the other day, so whenever I was out, out with Munter, she she started pushing me, going, get away. And I was all, where did you learn that? And she was with Sean's dad that day. And I rang him and I was all, did you teach Munter to, to say, get away? And he was all, no, that's mental. And then he rang me the next morning and he goes, oh, it was me. I taught her yesterday to say, get away. <laughs> Why was he teaching her that? He, says it was, he doesn't like her. He was trying to do a wee. <laughs> <laughs> didn't want her to comment. <laughs> no, they were playing a game. She was in the trolley. Oh, yeah, you know yeah, that one. Yeah, yeah. Get away <laughs> and get bye. Away. <laughs> Six hours later. <laughs> um, yeah. So they, they, yeah, he didn't like her. But the distillery gig was brilliant. And what I realised at that gig, I'm starting to go, who are my audience? Like, who are the people who enjoy my stand-up? Do you know what? You're like, I don't know what my age group of people are. Who wouldn't? And everyone in that audience Asian. was Asian. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Diona sounds about Asian, doesn't it? Everyone, I think it was my age and up. Right. Which I think your demographic is slightly younger than you. Or actually, it's probably a, quite a wide variety of age group, isn't it? You'd be surprised. you go, there's a 64-year-old guy. With his 14-year-old boyfriend. <laughs> 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 Who's coming to give me a massage. Yeah. No, it is it is very mixed. Well, I found my best gig so far. It seems to be people who are my age, 24 and up. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? It's like maybe yeah. maybe it's blame game audience sort of age group. I don't know. Right. But anyway, that was that was. But that yeah, was what about time. what happened when the guy lighting up a cigarette? He got asked to leave. I, he was he had it. I thought he was sleeping, but he was I guess with a head on the thing smoking in the front row. Th- thing was true. I was actually raging. He got kicked out because he was a great audience member. He was laughing. He had a great time. And I was like, leave. Then let that guy smoke in the room. Love a good laugh. Yeah. You know, we get someone in the room who just their laugh makes everybody else with laugh. Karen. Case in point. Yeah. Big, big, big husky laugh, and everyone yep. laughs. When's the last gig you bombed at? Like the last gig that you done really badly at? Two thousand nine. Um, oh, let me see. Or when's the last one you went? Jesus, that was shit. Uh, no, I've just been lucky to have some very good ones recently, but yeah. there definitely has been. Let me see. In a skill. Mm, mm, it's mm. a weird. It's a weird one, right? Because I'm not funny in a skill. It, it's a. It's a weird one because. It was Pat's bar. Same here. But it it went well. Mm-hmm. I didn't enjoy it purely because I I'd done a gig before. We'd done podcasts all day. I'd done a gig somewhere, and then it was going oh uh, corporate in Belfast, and they get straight there. I arrived, had to go on stage, and I was that is what normally happens, isn't it? You what? you arrive and you go on stage. No, but I mean like no time Immediate. to get in and settle. Yeah. Like the couple in the hotel room, I'm, you know, yeah. having sex with a cup of tea, straight in. Yeah. So I just was on stage going, I'm not firing all cylinders here. Aye. And it was going all right. It's not like, in terms of like a bomb with nothing, uh, yes, the improv in LA. Ah. Uh, I mean, that's, that's sort of possibly Crickets. to be expected if it's like, if you're adjusting to like, were no, they mostly tourists? No, it was... American? Here's what the problem was. So I did my tour show there. Yeah. The night after. Screw it. Yeah. Did another show. Brilliant. But what happens is, in those clubs, they don't have an MC, really. They just do, like... You pass the baton on to the next act. But they don't have headliner at the end of the night. The headliner... Say the show is on from 9 until 1 a.m. Headliner will be on, like, half 10, 11. Yep. Yeah. And then, so it goes after like this that, in terms yeah, of profile. Yeah. And then it goes whoosh, down yeah. the other side. So I went. So Tim Dillon was a headliner. Mm-hmm. Then there was another guy. Then the guy who was supposed to be last on. And I went on after the guy who was advertised to be last on. So I'd say. Most people left. 20% of the audience were still there. Mm-hmm. And I, I, I went on. Yes, yeah, like 1 a.m. And I went, oh, great to be here at the. Uh, 10 past 1, the sweet spot of the night. Yeah. Thinking they'll go, oh, yeah, well, I, relate. I, I see this guy's. Nothing. Nothing. I was like, that bit's going to kill. It's a bit like when I did a gig in Vegas and in the comedy cellar and I was like, I've got a great opening line here. So I said, I got up and I went, guys, I'm here on honeymoon, which I was, but I think people thought this is like a joke I always do. Yeah. And I went, my wife thinks I'm at the ice machine. <laughs> <laughs> Nothing. Oh, no. People are, people are like, I don't, I don't believe you're on honeymoon or if you See, are, that's it shit been, behavior. It would have, it's really funny that you actually were on honeymoon but because they think yeah. that's a bit, then... She did think I was at the ice machine. Did she? Yeah. Um, the Pats and Inniskillen as well. I did it. So what... It's you a, by the way, it's a great... Yeah. Everybody else killed. Loves it. Yep. And the room's packed, packed out. and it's cool. But you were supposed to be on the night. I did it a few months ago, but you pulled out because you were, it was so close to the birth of your son. You were like, I don't know. I don't want to be too far away from the house and kiss. That's right. 
things get exciting. Yeah. And Colin stepped on last That's minute. That's right. Now, I remember going on stage and the first three rows were all we lads who were about 17, all wearing the exact same outfit. And I was like, these are all, they're all here to see Shane. They're off on TikTok. Like, right. it's that sort of thing. Yeah. And they, I was doing lots of stuff about my daughter and being married and all and doing IVF. And they were all... Yeah. They just stared at me the whole time, like they and I like do we do like a half hour set in about twenty minutes, and you know, you just yeah. go, yep. and then I got off and I was like taking a beamer and I went over to Mark McCarney and Colin and I was all, that was really bad, and they both just went, ah, and just took a breath, and I was all, I'm gonna go, but I prefer that though, also. Like, would oh, yeah. you have liked to walk off and then go, no, it was brilliant. No, because they, they would have been lying and we all would have known that. Yeah. But I think I probably should have walked off and just walked past them. Just gone and home. left. I, and I did just leave. I um, will do this thing I've talked about before where, like, if someone doesn't do well yeah. and they know it and, ev- and everyone knows it and I will never go, that was great. Yeah. Because I wouldn't want someone to do it to me. So if you've had a bad one and I think you have, you'll notice because you come off and I go, well, did you enjoy it? Like, that's I, the only thing I think to say. Yeah, you have said that to me before. <laughs> yeah, quite a lot. <laughs> Carl Spain in uh, Galway, yeah. always, no matter how good of a gig, especially if you have a good gig, yeah. you walk off like, oh, that was amazing, and he'll go, you'll get them next time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Every yeah. time. Is that Willie T? Or every time I gig with Carl, you come off and he goes, I, I love that bit. He goes, what if you added this in? Yeah, like, yeah, he's yeah. like a wee mentor. Yeah. He's all, what if we added he's this like, in? That, that bit's perfect. Yeah. Apart from all these suggestions. That I'm going to give you. And it is always good. Who, what, who's in the building? Oh, okay. Do you appreciate people giving you advice about like bits of stand up or are you like fuck off? Uh, it depends who it is. It depends like what it is. What if it was me? Yeah, yeah, because you've seen get a lot of my gigs, you kinda know it's yeah. different if someone you've never met Did before you know goes <laughs> Well, here my dad recently goes, uh came to see the Opera House show and he's like, uh pick like two bits. He's like, Really like those bits. He goes, See the way the audience react that and he goes, In your next show? Why don't you just do bits like 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 that? And I was like, "What do you mean?" He's like, "All the rest." Was well, they filler. went. They were like unbelievable. Those bits, and say they're two bits. So why don't you just do more of that? Yeah. And I was like, "Oh, oh yeah, I've never yeah. thought about about doing, doing the that. really funny stuff." Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Why we hold them back? Yeah, I said to him, I was like, "That's like going up to like a Premier League footballer who scores one goal yeah, in thirty yeah, yeah. games and go see when you scored." Always just do that. That was the good stuff. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Just yeah. keep doing that. Yeah. Why are we not thinking? Um. But it depends. It depends who it is. It depends. Uh, yeah, I I I like it because I'll phone Dave if we're on the same gig. On the way, we'll speak the whole way home, the whole way. Really? About the gig, the material. I'm like, you had this bit. Maybe you could say this, and vice versa. See, that's great because every now and then, Sean and I would try and bounce off each other for ideas for for if we both have something coming up, and so much comes from it. Yeah. And like, we th- it'd be great to have like a comedians writer room. Like everyone just got together. It's like, do you know you're a bit about this? Yeah. What if we thought and, and and people just helped you out a bit? Well, sometimes I'll do that with William or Kieran. Uh, like we'll meet up, and it's just you're not you're not writing material together, but you're going. I've got this bit. And you sort of explain it, and they go, "Oh, what if you, what if you came out of from this?" I mean, that's it's that's like handy. the early stages. I'm an island. Of Epstein's <laughs> island. Which favorite island? Um, the one Saint Saint Martin. Where's that? The Caribbean. You, oh, you went there on honeymoon. Oh, I'm only saying that because it's the one where the pl- airplanes fly really low, and almost wacky in the face. Oh, really? They f- they they come about I think about ten meters above your head. It's like, vroom, so you go and watch the plane come in, and then after that, thirty seconds has passed. It's shape. <laughs> There's nothing to do then. I think I like a Caribbean. That's a wee bit of me. Have you been there? No. It's see, like gorgeous. sandals. You know, you would die though, right? Loads of it's loads of it's actually British. Oh yeah! Oh, it's really yeah. handy because you can English. use your sterling and like it's all handy. But I was all, oh, I didn't know. They I didn't speak know English. They got this far. Yeah, yeah. But they did, yeah. In Jamaica, they speak English. No? Yeah. But they speak patois. Is that what you call it? Yeah. Jamaican English. Yeah. I would love like I that as a. Great... Don't know if we're allowed to do. It. No, we're no, we're not. No, we're no, we're no, we're, we're but, absolutely but it's, but not. It, but is it not like a? It's like a dialect, like a like a, like a language. Yeah, but I just think you still you just you just don't, don't you not? But can you ago, do it without it? the accent, or is that the whole? Well, that's of the, that's this. Yeah, yeah, We're yeah. doing it without the accent right now. Yeah. This is it. <laughs> we speak Patois. Like I'm now, yeah, 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 that's it. Like, I'm I'm now speaking, like, Mancunian, but without the accent. Can the next time you do, like, a headline set, can you just do it exclusively in Patois? Yeah. Uh, also, is that what it's called? It is called Patois, isn't it? That sounds very French. Patois? Yeah. Patois. Sounds like something you'd, like, you'd put on your sandwich. 
<laughs> bit of patois before you put the meat on. It, it sounds like the wet bit. Yeah, yeah, the yeah. The moist maker. That's what. That's a moist bit of meat. What the is patois? Yes. Uh, is that what it's called? Yeah, Dan, can you hit us with the patois phrase? Who do you, is it, have you got some patois there? How did you spell patois? How did you even Google that? I would have been able to. P a t o i s or some. Ah. Oh really? Tom oh, right. that sounds like patois. Cause I, yeah. I, see, O I S would have been French. Right. Um, Do you um, eat turkey for Christmas dinner? Yeah. Do you think it's really dry? It depends what way it's made. But you put you 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 accessorize it. I only got into cranberry about two years ago. Oh yes, love yeah. a bit of cranberry. Yeah. Um, do because last night whenever we were in Pogs, they serve us like honey mustard sausages. Oh, they're so good. They're on mild, but Sean and I make them with our Christmas dinner. Right. And I think everybody should like that's a fucking addition, isn't it? Right. But are you cooking your Christmas? Do you cook it? No. Do your wife cook it? No. Does somebody's ma cook it? Tyson Fury's my sister. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. It's just there. You it's just, just arrive there. and it's yeah, there. That yeah, is yeah, the yeah. most shady thing I've I'll ever I'll never heard. do Christmas dinner ever. If, if there's anything you want me to get for it, I'll go out and I'll get it. Whatever you need, I'll get it. But I just I I I can't like really. When cook Sean it was growing up and he was like a teenager, his whole family went to the Sleeve Donard for Christmas dinner that day, and one day and one one Christmas day, and there was like a full pig with an apple in its mouth on the table. Well, like eating with them. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> it was eating the turkey. <laughs> Look around. On like <laughs> now, I think what that's... That? <laughs> but that was annoying. I think that's a weird move to do the Christmas Day thing. Yeah. But then again, no dishes. But no also, traffic on the road. But also, like, it, it, he was like, it was like ridiculously expensive back then for like people who didn't, like, he didn't have money back then. Do you know what I mean? So obviously his dad robbed the bank. And right, like, Northern Bank. It. Yeah, the Northern Bank yeah. robbery. And like had to launder it through the sleeve donor at Christmas dinner. What's overrated about Christmas? What do you... Um, mulled wine, stinking. Gross. Absolutely stinking. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, present the whole present thing like we now in our family and my friends we don't buy presents for anybody anymore yeah. any adults right which is a wee bit miserable but also it's like what the fuck's the point you're gonna get shite and you're gonna buy shite are you a good present giver the best really but i also wrap presents like it's an art form ah uh, okay I, gather, I used to do tinfoil like, genuinely tinfoil yeah like i used method. to do on boxing day I, when i worked in the yacht club as a yeah. dishwasher when i was like se 16 17 uh-huh I would get my bon you got your Christmas bonus. Gosh. And I would get dropped off by one of the other waiters at the big Tesco's, not yeah. the gunny. And I would do my Christmas shopping and I would always buy a roll of tin foil and I would just take the gift. Whoosh, whoosh, done. Cause you do then kind of unwrap it, but it takes two minutes to do. That is shit. It's sad, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah. I would I properly like do like brown paper and bows and then I get like from like outside like pine cones and like acorns and like sh bits of stuff and I glue them on my favourite thing is they hang out my glue gun fuck me and my glue gun <laughs> we have a great time it's, you... a, it's a lot more peaceful than the other types of guns yeah glue. I'll glue shit I'll just glue all my acorns and shit onto like my packaging is fucking phenom it sounds yeah although in saying that there it was Sean's birthday yesterday and that fell like a fuck off would you you not get him anything <laughs> I did like but it was nothing special was it? it got like shoes and aftershave and just shit like that what and shoes what aftershave just like a pair of brown leather next shoes like they're like trainers like smart trainers there's no like, such thing no they're like dressy trainers that you would wear with brown? like a pair of trousers what colour is the sole Don't white Whites, they're like trainers, but they're like what color smart. Are the laces? Brown. <laughs> no, they're nice. No, they're and not. And then they got aftershave. <laughs> they got, no, they are. They're not nice. And then I got like a Christmas jumper and shit. Oh, shit so what I aftershave? Got, um, so I got, I usually buy um, um, Chanel blue, but there was none left. So God, I'm Gucci guilty for men. Now listen, I wear Gucci <laughs> guilty as a day perfume. And I was just like, do you know what happened? I ran over to the shop and said it was five to nine the night before and it was closing and I went down to Boots and had a small selection. I was like, just give me that because I, I know the name. I mean, it's baller that Sean will just be walking about doing gigs. gucci up. Yeah. <laughs> just walking about spreading Gucci. Yeah. I love that. What, why, what do you wear? I left my good aftershave. Should I, uh, here, right. I left my good aftershave in Liverpool in the hotel room. Don't ring Liverpool. <laughs> now, I'll ring the hotel to see if they still have it. Well, they won't. Oh, my God. 11.03. William, my car's broken down on back roads here. Now, there's something going on because I what does he mean he, on back roads? He doesn't like you anymore. 
It was he's feeling weird since the massage thing. <laughs> <laughs> the sad thing is, I can see here. his reflection in his dashboard, and he's crying. Can you see no, his reflection? I can just see oh, his hands. Right. Let's um, see if I can get this after shave back. You won't. I left my full house keys. Like when I was a student and I lived in the Holands, do we have a front door key, and then the same front door key will lead to your bedroom. Yeah. Like magic. Right. But somebody else's front door key will lead to their bedroom. Right. Like magic. Right. Do you know what I mean? It's yeah, very yeah, complicated yeah. setup. You know, locksmiths. That's one of those things. Who understands it? But just you got to go with it. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> do you mean you don't understand no. this? <laughs> how do they all open the front door? That's going. I have no fucking idea what you're talking about. Well, how about. do they all open the front door? Yeah. But then not individual bedrooms right science yeah but i left my keys in my holiday in my, in my holidays right <laughs> <laughs> i've left my keys in my holidays <laughs> i left them in like my or something and then and then i came Oh, where's <laughs> Mummy's keys? <laughs> That's her holidays. <laughs> <laughs> Mummy, where Daddy go? He's all, he left him on the holidays. But I came back and I had to ring a locksmith going, fuck's sake, I don't have my keys. But I had to pay for every fucker's... There was, I was sharing with six people because the front door lock was being changed. Right, right, right. Every fucker's bedroom it cost yep. me £400 as a yep. student. Yeah. I was like 18. Yep. I had to pay that. Shit. But that's what I mean. When I rang the hotel, they were like, no, we don't have your keys. You weren't even here. Oh, yeah? <laughs> but that's what I mean. You're going to ring them now and they will not have that pair at aftershave. Also, what aftershave is it? Tom Ford. It's nice. How much was left of it? Oh, a good bit. Aye. The guy who who sold it to me in Victoria Square put, I'd say, 20 squirts on me. I said, how do you actually that's spray so aftershave? Dirty. Well, some people will put it on their clothes. Some people put it there. Whatever. I said, what's the right way to do it? And I swear to God, this guy just grabbed me by the scruff of the neck, pulled me into him, and was like, ch -ch 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 -ch, all over. I went, just like that. Weird. I'll tell you something. <clears throat> he doesn't know what he's talking about. Really? All them people. I work there. We, we're going to talk shit. You're supposed to spray the back of your legs. No, you're not. <laughs> what do you mean? Behind your kneecap. Who's smelling that? Well, you're meant to put it in places that, that exude it the rest of the day. Well, for short people, if people <laughs> you want them to be smell you too. Back of your knees, back of your neck. Warwick Davis is like, oh, he smells great. <laughs> <laughs> I think I've mentioned him. But that's my book. Oh, really? Imagine, but look, you've the nicest smelling knees I've ever seen, ever snuffed. Hello? <laughs> You should ring and go, listen, I'm a comedian and <laughs> I've left after shave there. Oh, what room is it? Uh, my holidays. <laughs> I'll you have to get someone. I think you're supposed to spray it there as well, like the back of your your arm kneecaps. Where your heartbeats are. <laughs> you're supposed to do it. Yeah. Yeah, like where, where, where your pulse is. I think, well, that would be there too, yeah, in the back yeah, of your yeah. knees. Like, yeah. that's where veins come out. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, and then I, I think give it up just, on this, but it was it was. Oh, I don't. I I'm not like a. <clears throat> I'm not tight with money at all. No, like at all. But it's very rare. I go. I'm gonna get something really nice, like the hotel in Edinburgh. Yeah. I was like, I'm gonna be traveling. I want to get a good sleep. No. <laughs> <laughs> I used to work on the perfume counters in oh, Debenhams and right. Bits and All for years yep. and the makeup counters and the shit you tell people that is not true oh like oh, yeah oh my god and you're like, you don't have any expert information whatsoever but you're like well this is clattered and vitamins A, C and A and actually you, as soon as you use this you'll you look like a fetus right. and you're, you're just making <laughs> shit up Who, who's walking into Debenhams going just make me look like a fetus yeah I just want to be a fetus but do you know the amount of white women that would come in and hand me pictures of Beyonce and go can I get my makeup like that and I'm like there's I don't think so. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> like there's, that's not going to happen. I was thinking about this recently, right? I See, when I was younger, I don't think I had as many mates as I thought. Oh, uh, no, yeah. You like, can say that? Well... I was, in over, I was, and I'm only saying this recently, I was an overbearing friend. Oh, but then you're an only child. Yeah, true. So that's that's bound to be, you're bound to see other people and just go... I, I, them. I was calling for people I can't remember being called for. Oh, I know. there was a wee boy in my street who was like re much younger than me. He was only about three, maybe about five, and I'm going to say I was about nine. And yeah. he used to call to the house and he always had a runny nose. And it was always green, so you knew, you knew it was his body was fighting the infection. <laughs> he used to always go, 
as Nuna coming out and he would call me <laughs> Nuna and I, and I was always turned going no right. Nuna isn't coming out get the right. fuck off my doorstep what's happened to him do you know um, he's like, like a counsellor in Derry <laughs> no, I'm joking I don't know where he is you ever look people in school up yeah I should, um, a guy that was living two doors down from me was plays for Derry City and was one of the guys they won, the, they won the cup Shane McElhinney oh why he, uh, he, he follows me on uh, Instagram yeah he's come on the podcast oh really oh, my, my. he's a really good player yeah he played across the water didn't he him and his brother him and Patrick, Patrick. McElhinney they, they were my next door neighbours for like 10 years played for Dundalk when I was a child were they always, they were always playing football um, probably. Yeah. But in between putting Mondays on. Right. But I love in a shit hole. But my ma used to do their ma's hair, Patricia. Oh really? But I always have vivid memories of my ma doing their ma's hair, and I'd be in their house because they had three sisters as well, and I'd be playing with their sisters, and I'd be all, I'd go under the love the kitchen and build my mommy, mommy came Bruna come down to our house and play, and do it my ma. I remember always my mommy behind their ma, so their ma couldn't see her, and she would just be like. Because she obviously didn't want people to come to her house to play. Oh, okay. Because that's where we got bit. <laughs> she was just like, no, I don't the want fucking house, people to come. The dirty house of horror. And she and her face would always just drop and then my fucking blood would turn cold and I'd be all, actually, Bruno, I, I think I've got a good Irish dancing. <laughs> you can't come anymore. I love looking people from school. Yeah. Do you, you see like, the people you used to fancy in primary school are really stinking too? They just don't. I mean, you just, you're like, oh, just, you just don't look the same anymore. Would you rather... Which is weird, you're like, oh, you were so hot when you were a kid. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I know, you, at when one you stage you fancied <laughs> six-year-olds. Do you know what I mean? At one stage you couldn't wait to go with a six-year-old. Yeah. <laughs> you were in third year. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But you know, um, I always find it weird when you see, because you remember them as a child, you know, they have like that child's face, but on an adult body. Yeah, yeah, it's yeah. so weird. And some people just don't look right. It's not that they don't look good, they just don't look right. You're like, I didn't see your face going like this. Yes, I didn't see the transition. No. And if I had have just met you now, you'd look like an absolutely normal person, but because I know that face used to be six. Yeah, like sometimes I think I'm in the Truman Show, and when I look someone up, yeah, they didn't expect, they didn't expect... Oh no, I sound like Kanye West. <laughs> they didn't expect me to look them up. That's why you buy tinfoil for every so helmet. That, so they have to make the picture of them really quick. Does that oh. make sense? <laughs> yes. <laughs> like they have like a this jigsaw guy's puzzle face. of five different people's faces being stuck <laughs> together. <laughs> They're just making up a name, Bob. This guy was in my class for one week in, in P3. And I search them and they're like, ah, fuck, put some together. Yeah, they are like, he was only an extra, <laughs> fuck's sake. Yeah. But he's Gotta loving it because he's getting the money again after years of not yeah, expecting he's, he's, it. Yeah, he pops back up. Yeah. Um, would you rather have been an ugly child that morphed into a better looking adult or the other way around? Well, that's exactly, I was the first thing. That's what happened? Yeah, yeah. Because, but, but, but it's damaging when you're a wee ugly child and you're in school and like no one, so like, do you, maybe you're going to hold that damage. Say you're a wee stinking child. I was. And nobody fancies you. Yeah. That's a hard time. I think, yeah, I think people, I think you could see potential in me when I was, I was ugly. But other kids Big are going to go, here, see when we look him up when we're 33. <laughs> yeah. He's going to still look weird, but better. <laughs> like in a rush to make me. Yeah. Um, Is there anybody who you went to school with who's like, who's like really successful at something that you're like, wow, that person done well for themselves? Or do you think, is it just, is it, is it you? No, I think only because what I do is like a public thing. Uh-huh. If that makes sense. There's probably there people who in the business world are killing it. Yeah, who are like doing proper shit. Yeah. You, yeah. Although when I see people I school to school with, they're like bald. Of, uh, like they just look old. Not if they're, they don't yeah. need to be bald, but like they just they just look old. They've had a more stressful like, life than you. I don't look like you. Yeah, because you're getting masseus, mass- massages by fucking Tyson Fury's <laughs> masseuse in, in Liverpool. <laughs> These guys are working all day. Yeah. I don't know. I, I It's just where I don't think... I, I look at people my and I'm like, they grew up at the, on the right scale. That makes sense? Yeah, but... Like, y- oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Like I, they're not, they do look like they're in their 30s and you don't. I don't. It's not that I don't think I look my age. I think it's just like... I I don't need to... I don't go to like an off... I don't need to... <laughs> I don't need to be seri- serious or anything. Yeah, 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 yeah. I kind of pause... Once you start doing stand-up, I think you kind of pause there for a while. In terms like of like the way Pan. you dress, all that, yeah, yeah, wee bit. As I was saying about like when I, when I the street that I grew up in, the your guy who plays for Derry lived next door or two doors down. He so that street it was an absolute shit hole. Still, is like it's like a really rough area, and I lived there till I was ten, nine or right. ten. And I remember being in Debenhams in Derry one Christmas doing Christmas shopping, and a girl that worked there was all to me. Did you used to live in Gallia? And I was all, 
Yeah, but not till she probably did that thing where she looked at my face and went, I know that child's face, but right. it's now in a 30 year old woman. Yeah. <laughs> Oh, this was recently? Oh, like in the past couple of years. Ah. She's like, did you used to love and get in? As well? And she goes, oh, I just remembered your face from then. And I right. was all, she was like, you don't look like someone who used to live there. And I was like, is that a compliment? I think, yeah, I think it is. But it's like, what do the rest of them look like? Yeah. All, all haunted. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Just like rocking back and forth, <laughs> screaming and crying. Who's been the best, last question, who's been the best podcast guest you've had on recently? Who surprised you? Who's come in you've gone, wow, that was great. Who? Um, I don't know. I love when Sean's on. I have yeah. really good fun with Sean when Sean's on it. If Sean thinks Sean's only done it once or twice. Um, fuck, I can't even remember who my recent guests are. Jack Do you know? Mark. Pardon? Mark. Mark McCarney is fucking great to have yeah, on. Because he's, he's so different. Yeah, he's yeah. very funny. He's very funny. And also, do you know who's a great guest? Bruna Diamond. Yeah. She's a great guest. She's very funny. She's very quick. She's very intelligent. I actually don't think I've seen Bruna do stand up. She's she's good. Yeah. I know, I know. She's good, yeah. yeah. But she is actually very intelligent. You don't, and I know that's like, you don't think she would be, but she is very well read. She's got a, a fucking great vocabulary. I heard she was really good doing my blood live at Ulster Hall. Yeah, yeah. And that would be a perfect audience for her too. Hallions. <laughs> yeah. Who's your favourite podcast guest before we move, before Recently? We move on? Recently? Yeah. Someone who surprised me. Ever? Oh, best ever? Jeez. Probably just probably go Kieran. Kieran? Yeah. I thought you were gonna say Don in there. Um just But that was that was Zoom. Was that was Zoom? my favourite one. Was he not sat here? Nope. I've been rubbing my Is arch that all over this over. <laughs> <laughs> Um and who are you dying to get on still? Dare McKenna? Nesbit. 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 That is gonna happen though, isn't it? Nope. If he's falling out. Maybe. I should stop I don't talking. No, it's just like no, he just he, it's cat and mouse. What are, we, what are we scat there? I'll get him eventually. Okay. Uh, your podcast, plug it. Remember When with Jane Rodorty. Out every Thursday. Oh, I. There's basically so. I mean, there are a couple of tickets. There's a handful of tickets Fuck left you, for Dan. Home Alone, geohitch.co.uk. Husband's wearing Gucci, don't worry about it. <laughs> if you want to go to <laughs> see that. Do you want to plug that? You're like, do I? Fuck. There's only, there's a handful of tickets there for Boxing Day and New Year's Eve. The other 31 shows have like two or three tickets left, but they're all single seats. But it's a great seat to buy if you don't like your boyfriend and you're like, let's go see a Christmas show, but you sit over there. Do you know what's funny? That you were like, when you work at the perfume counter, you get good at just being like, hey sell people things <laughs> only single seats left but they're the best ones yeah 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 why would you want to sit with your friends and family and let out yeah Sean and I are going to it one night and we're sitting separately because there's no seats left oh really yeah but it's your show yeah but you still need a seat pull strings or you could sit in the box but why do you want to sit in the box I know I know I'd hate that anyway yeah thank you for coming on thanks for having me Dear Doherty William Thompson oh my nipple matches my jumper you what <laughs> my nipple matches my jumper that's not what I thought you said <laughs> Not what I thought you said. Oh, really? What do you think I said? My nipples match my jumper, <laughs> and he thought that too. Well, I hope they don't, guys, because that is a serious condition. Matching nipples, the name of this week's episode. Cheers to William Thompson, who's brilliant, I thought. Oh, he was so good. William's probably the best guest who's been on recently in this episode. Yeah, I, l I love his mime work. <laughs> he's so he's good. Sort of, he's sort of, you can't say he says too much. No. You know, it's, it's right about. There's a lot, we're saying very little. There's a lot in the silence. SSC Arena, uh, 23rd of September next year uh, go, go take it in the description by the time this podcast go out the sequel to Bridesmaids will be on sale for the Opera House next year kidding me The Hindu which sounds like the it Hindu? should be before so is that not controversial why <laughs> bringing religion into it no what's that got to be religion <laughs> oh The Hindu <laughs> I was like no I don't get that <laughs> The Hindu right. and it's on sale it's on, it'll be on sale same now. cast no I'm in it though I didn't want to be because, yeah, I didn't want. To. I I would thought I was. Hey, Dylan, it's all so good. <laughs> <laughs> I'm in it again. I had written the show with different characters, so like the none of us would be in it, but the producers wanted me to put my character on it, so I've rewritten my, my characters back on it. You're the producer, though. No, I'm not. <laughs> oh, wait, just the writer. Anyway, the Henry Opera House. Okay. And elsewhere. Guys, thank you very much for watching, for listening. patreoncom slash me podcast. I need to blow my nose. I'm gonna miss that.